This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader who's going through this 15 book series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we are covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan of the series, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. Before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Mimi to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity, and we're really excited to have your support. We also want to acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood. In this episode, we're talking about chapters 39 and 40 of The Dragon Reborn. Yeah, so chapter 39 is Threads in the Pattern, which is a super original title yeah, for a chapter. Yeah, you hate those chapter titles. I like them. There's so many. There's like Threads in the Pattern and like Webs of the Pattern and Webs yeah, of the Weave. Yeah, but then I know that like some interesting... Pattern of the Web. I know that some interesting stuff is going to happen. I guess so. I'm just like, I, I need something new. And then chapter 40 is A Hero in the Night. You, that's new. Yeah, that is new. And these are pretty good... Cha- they're, they're the longest chapters we've done this book, I think. In the whole book and they're yeah, together <laughs> they are so like we need to get going on this because <laughs> yeah. we are also on baby watch we're yeah. on baby countdown yeah we're three and a half weeks away and we still have quite a bit of this book to do yeah i thought we were like on pace but apparently we're like a little bit off so last I don't know. week i was very tired we didn't hit our goal of the amount of episodes we needed to do last week yeah so, so we're gonna play catch up here yeah but let's do this thing because there is so much in these two chapters. Yeah, and just as kind of like a side note, kind of like the last chapter with all the IEL stuff going on with this one, I'm going to do a little bit more of a breakdown for you to hopefully keep making it make sense. Okay. Okay, so fun fact time, because we got a little introduction here in chapter 39 about the whole blood of the long walkers and strong runners thing, and we've been introduced not for the first time to the concept that the IEL are like incredibly strong runners. They're both quick and they've got endurance to run for a long time. And here we see it in action with like the group IEL keeping pace with the horses and they continue on their way, but even faster. And we've got like the Avienda and Ruark making bets so they can like outrun the horses and things like that. So I did make a note about IEL humor question mark because you were all yeah. about the IEL humor. I'm last all time. about that. So there's a hypothesis called the endurance running hypothesis. And it states that the evolution of certain human characteristics can be explained through adaptations for long distance running. Yeah. Because apparently endurance was like a really big important role for early hominins for obtaining food. So researchers have proposed that endurance running began as an adaptation for scavenging and then later for persistence hunting. So persistence hunting, it's not the same thing as pursuit predation which is basically like a cheetah chases the gazelle until it either catches it or gets away. Persistence hunting means hunters who are slower than their prey over short distances use a combination of walking, running, and tracking to pursue its prey until it literally just dies of exhaustion. Yeah. And early humans and hunter-gatherers was basically that was how they hunted by chasing down prey over long distances. And humans are the only surviving primates that have actually practiced persistence hunting. So it really makes sense as the Aeol, who are like a desert people, would adopt strategies such as endurance running to help them like find food because that's how humans used to do it. Yeah. And still in some places in the world, that still happens today too. Right. I actually read a book a couple years ago, actually more than a couple years ago, but I read a book called Born to Run. Okay, yeah. And it's all about this. It's actually about like ultra marathon yes, runners. Crazy. Yeah. And it's v- actually very interesting. I can't think of the author off the top of my head, but yeah, if anybody yeah. is interested in anything even remotely related to this, that book, Born to Run, was very good. Yeah. And so, like ultra marathoners are on like a like 50 kilometers every day for like a month. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so, crazy. Yeah. So that kind of makes sense for the IL. Also why they wouldn't value horses very much because in the, in like a wasteland in the desert, you can't really feed horses. So there doesn't make sense to keep them. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So wheel of time. Yeah. Okay. So last time we had Nynaeve, Elaine and Egwene leaving Tarvalin. They got their ship caught on something or yeah, their ship boat. got caught on something and so they went wandering the countryside of Kyrian and came across some Aiel women yeah Nynaeve healed one of them and then they went on you know and that's where we are with them yeah and then Matt is with Tom on his way to Camelin after being attacked on some ship yes so that's where we are now let's get into chapter 39 threads in the pattern 
And we have the wheelie snake picture because it's all about... Threads and patterns. Threads and patterns. Yeah. So we are in Egwene's point of view still. Nynaeve has just healed Dalen. Yeah. And Jolene, that's how I'm going to say her name now. Yeah, that's fine. Is shocked. Like, they haven't seen anything like this. And Nynaeve barks at them like a wise one. Yeah. It's... I told you to get her clothes. <laughs> Don't question me and my methods. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny that this is like really, really crazy to see because last chapter the maidens were like, oh, we've heard that some wise ones can you know, do the healing kind of like you, I said, I can, whatever, whatever. But apparently what Nynaeve just did is like way far and beyond what they've seen before. Right. Like the wound is completely gone like not even a mark yeah like i don't even know if moraine's healing can do yeah. this right like Nani clearly is like this is her thing so yeah. okay and then we get some more information about some aiel stuff that you want to talk about well yeah basically like dylan is avienda's second sister so there's that whole like they're related thing and then avienda's like but hey, aren't they from oh no 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 they're from the same those two are from the same clan yeah, yeah, th yeah, these yeah. ones are like actual, so yeah. it's the mother's sister's daughter, so they're actually related yeah. through blood. And then that's why Avienda's like, hey, I owe you a blood debt now. Like, this is kind of Because important. you saved my blood kin. Yeah, exactly. So, like, we don't really get any more of that, but that's just no. something to keep in the back of your mind. Okay. And at this point, Egwene asks the Aiel women how they cross rivers. Yeah, this is hilarious. Because they must have had to cross... A river to get to where they are here. I mean, at least one. Like, they're pretty yeah. far over the dragon wall now, and there's rivers, yeah. like, clearly, so. Yeah, and they're like, well, we, like, walk through it if they're if it's shallow enough. Or, you know, someone remembered that wood floats, and we just built a raft. Yeah, built a ship. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, like, two or three logs tied together. <laughs> built a ship. <laughs> that, that's how we do it. I mean, that's, that's huge, though. Like, they're clearly yeah. overcoming their huge fear of water. Yeah. They don't even like going near it, so... Yeah, and they rafted across it Yeah, in their little yeah. makeshift dead log <laughs> raft. And Nynaeve doesn't care about any of this, and she's super easy to get going. But Egwene asks them why they are out and about anyway. Which is just like Perrin did. I've just yeah. been waiting for this because the entire interaction we had with them last time, we didn't really get Egwene or Elaine or anyone asking them like, Hey, Aiel ladies. Why are you not in the waste? Yeah, like, like you guys don't come here. Yeah. Why are, Why do you come here? <laughs> yeah, and so finally, Egwene does ask, and turns out they're searching for the one foretold, he who comes with the dawn. Yes. Also referred to as Far Darismai? No. So the prophecies oh. say he was born of Far Darismai, which oh, is the okay, maidens okay, of the okay. spirit. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's old tongue for maidens of the spirit. Gotcha. Okay. But before we get that, they do mention that they were among the last to set out because the wise ones had nipped at her, saying that Avienda had other duties. Oh. And we kind of like speculated last time that there's a good chance Avienda can channel because she can clearly like sense and Egwene can that's sense true. that kinship. I remember that. Yeah. And then we have the whole like we know that clan chiefs and we know that like to be wise ones go to this Ruidian. Yeah. Which is funny. But she would have had to, she has to give up the spear in order to go yeah. to Ruidian. Yeah, and that kind of makes sense why, like, Bane and Chiad are, like, you know, rubbing her as in, like, you know, you you have other duties, but you're here anyways. Yeah. So it all kind of is, like, making sense a little bit more. Okay. So then we get that maiden bearing a child stuff. Yeah. Like, direct from the source here. And this is, we've heard this before. Yeah, we have. I don't, I think we've heard most of it. Yeah, I, d I didn't get anything new out of this. Okay, like they pass around the kid so like nobody knows yeah, who Yeah, we the... knew that one. Okay, I okay. knew that already. That's good. Yeah, I knew all of this. And yeah. we just get it confirmed. Yeah, and now like the girls also know that's a thing. Yes. So, Avienda says, the wise ones say to go out looking for him now, so that's what we're doing. Yeah. And just one little tidbit of information that we may or may not have heard before, it's the blood of our blood mixed with the old blood raised by an ancient blood not ours so that's i think talking i about... actually have heard that before okay maybe we didn't really know 100 percent about it though well i'm pretty sure we've had a conversation where we speculated that obviously this is rand because he's being raised not in the waste yeah the only issue is that it seems like there's three separate sources here so that's the blood of our blood which is like the aiel mixed with the old blood and we don't know what that old blood means raised by an ancient blood not ours which is probably the whole manethrin thing yeah 
I'm gonna guess that the old blood is maybe his like loose Theron stuff. Okay, I like it. I like it. Okay. okay, and then this is when we get the transition into the whole like Avienda. Then in turn is asking Nynaeve and the women where they're going. Yeah, what are you guys doing out here? But you really got to look at the phrasing because it's how she asks that's really important here. So she says she paused, obviously choosing her words. And Avienda says, you must understand that we look for omens and signs. Why do three Aes Sedai walk a land where the only hand without a knife in it is a hand too weak with hunger to grasp the hilt? Where do you go? Yeah. So she's looking for an omen and a sign. And she's asking it in a very weird way. Even for the Aiel, we've heard them talk before. Yeah. This is weird phrasing, and I'm pretty sure you probably glossed over it. I did, but it also kind of sounds to me a little bit like it's weird that you guys are out here and we are obviously looking for someone and something. Yeah. And it reminds me of Fael. Fael, yeah. Uh, who's like, any hunter knows to follow strange trails. That's exactly what it's like, and yeah. And so I think that it's like, we're going to follow you now. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it definitely is. But just kind of continuing this conversation. So then Nynaeve answers Tear, and she mentions the heart of the stone. And she also says, we're going to hunt evil women. Yeah, but before that, when she says that they're heading to Tear, the Aiel women were looking at one another and Jolene freezes when Nynaeve says Tear. Yeah. So it's clearly like something that they're looking into. So when Nynaeve answers her, the Ayala women like have a look at each other. And then Jolene freezes and Avienda says, kind of like completing her thought process, three Aes Sedai walking through a troubled land on their way to Tyr. This is the strange thing. Yeah, so you really got to look at the phrasing of how they're interacting with the girls when they're talking about where they're going. Okay, well, Nynaeve doesn't really care about anything that they're saying. Yeah. And is just like, okay, we're leaving, bye. And I just thought that was, like, really fast. I really thought that they were going to be traveling together. Yeah, like, kind of teaming up or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I really thought that that is sort of how this would go. But Nynaeve is like, nope, peace out. And they leave. Yeah. And then that's it. And I thought, oh, weird. Okay. So once they're far enough away, Elaine talks about how much she doesn't know about the Aiel. And is a little bit, like, shocked at how off her knowledge about the Aiel is. Yeah, like seemingly some of the stuff is right. Yeah. Like her knowledge of the... But not all the way. Yeah, like yeah. even the knowledge of the Aiel war and it being more of an execution versus like an actual war. Yeah. Like she does seem to be right about that, but everything else is kind of wrong and off. Yeah, and then we get some, you know, of the backstory of Avendasora and the sapling and all that stuff that we've heard before. We do get mentioned that there's a land beyond the waste, too. Oh, cool. Yeah, because that's what Kyrian's wealth was built on in trade in ivory and perfumes and spices, and most of all, silk from the lands beyond the waste. Gotcha. So there's something on the other side of the waste, and we don't really know what it is, but they have silk. Okay. All right. Cool. So Elaine then says, Hey, Egwene, you know who that he who comes with the dawn is, right? Yeah, I'm glad she figured it out. And Egwene goes, what? You don't mean Rand. <laughs> and Elaine's yeah. like, yes, duh. And so that's funny. That, that is funny. And Egwene still is like unsure. She's like, I don't know. I know he was raised by Tam, but Nynaeve knows about Rand's backstory, but I don't think I'd get anything out of Nynaeve. Yeah, and so, it's all kind of weird. Yeah, I don't think she buys it 100%. Like, Egwene doesn't buy that Rand is yeah. He Comes with the Dawn? Yeah. Okay. And it's so weird because, like, Elaine puts together that she thinks that Rand's mom must be a maiden. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense for their prophecies. Yeah. But. And Elaine is just looking at the pure facts and logic of it, whereas Egwene is looking at this quite emotionally because this is someone who she grew up with. Yeah. And as long as she's known, Rand has been from the Two Rivers. She knows his mother died. She knows his father. She doesn't want to necessarily believe that, you know, Rand isn't of Kari and Tam. Kari. Kari? Kari. Kari, Kari. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so... After a while of, like, walking in silence, Elaine and Egwene compliment Nynaeve on her healing back there. Yeah. This is, like, almost Egwene trying to, like, 
you know, close the the rift between them. Yeah. And it doesn't really work that well. No. And then Elaine's still just annoyed. Yeah. Well, and Nynaeve knows what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> because they're like, wow, you did really great. Oh, amazing work. And then Nynaeve, like, ruffles her hair as if she's, like, a little child. Yeah. Thanks, Egwene. Like, There's, like, a weird dynamic shift because, like, Nynaeve used to be Egwene's superior and now they're, like, equal footing. Yeah. And, and even once they got to the tower and Nynaeve got to be an accepted and Egwene was a novice, there was still that hierarchy. It's like a power shift issue. And now Egwene wants to sit at the grown-ups table. Yeah. And Nynaeve still really isn't okay with that. Yeah, so it's kind of like we'll see where their friendship goes, I guess. Yeah, I don't if know. If they can move past that. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. So, as they are walking, Elaine shouts, look out! And Egwene gets conked over the head and passes out. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And it's like right after they're like, oh, there's no way that more Aiel could be hiding. But it's like, hey guys, bandits, right? We yeah, forgot about I'm... this whole, yeah. oh my god, people popped up right in front of you. Yeah, they're like, they let down their guards. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. It's so bad. It's really bad. Because they're like, we don't need any men defending us. Like... And then they just go <laughs> tromping through the grass. Yeah. With like no heads up, like nothing. No scouting. No, no paying attention. No paying attention. And then they just get like freaking captured. Like literally kidnapped. Again. Like literally kidnapped. And then like hogtied over a horse. Yeah. So this is bad. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> no. So... Egwene wakes up, she's tied to a horse, but her head hurts so much that she's unable to embrace Sidar. Yeah. Which is a problem, because, like, how's she gonna get out of this one? I mean, it's good for us to know, like, magic system-wise, too. Like, if your head isn't, like, if you can't focus and concentrate, you can't get the power. Well, so... I mean, we already know that from Nynaeve. Yeah. Who has trouble focusing and concentrating. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's like she needs to be super angry, angry but, so. But, like, yeah. we do know there are limitations. Yeah. Right? So... She's super pissed off at being a prisoner again, and I feel that. Like, this is not going to do well for her mental health. Yeah. This like, is bad, oh. I think. And so she sees that Nynaeve and Elaine are also captured and, like, face down, passed out on horses. And then she hears some men talking about them and their rings. Yeah, so they know that they're Aes Sedai. Yeah. So one of the men sees that she's awake and then she just gets conked on the head again. Yeah, and we got to talk about, like, hit injuries here because yeah. this is, like, super dangerous. And we see, like, in the next, like, sequence here uh -huh. that Elaine's head is broken. Yeah. And if Nynaeve doesn't like, heal Like, literal <laughs> skull fracture. Like, getting hit in the head is a bad thing, guys. To the point of getting just, like, knocked out. It's bad. Oh, yeah. So, we get Egwene waking up again. And this time it's dark out. And she's in some room with, like, a dirt floor. And she's not tied up. Yeah, and she's she not. also notes that her head's feeling okay. Yeah, so it's not bad. Yeah. It's hilarious as it's to why. It's so funny. Yeah. This is actually, this whole sequence is quite entertaining. It's amazing. Yeah. And I gotta say, <laughs> just like, so you know, this is like one of the fan favorite chapters. Well, I just can't believe how fast it went. It's like... like <laughs> I thought this was going to be a long drawn out, like, Egwene being a capture of the Shan Chen... Was a whole was, thing. Like an entire thing. Like yeah. at least like over like 10 Egwene chapters... You know, and there was a whole thing to get her free and, like, this whole plot. and. But now we get, like, captured. <laughs> yeah. It, like, within... Capty and then Within, like, saved. three pages. Yeah, it's great. Or whatever. Like, it's crazy. I really thought this was going to be a much bigger plot point than it actually was. Yeah. It's kind of funny. So, she sees that Nynaeve and Elaine are also passed out in this weird little room. And Elaine has blood on the side of her face. But neither of them are tied up either. Yeah. Like, what? these guys are so bad at capturing people. But they think that they're really good at it. Uh, it's so... Like, they have a they have a thing in mind. That's why they gave them the sleep well route, which I we find know, out later. I know, So they think that they've got hours. <laughs> it's just, these guys are so bad at, like, literally what they're doing. They're so bad at it. And it works in our, you know, character's favor. It does. But it's just so funny how bad they are at this. I don't know. So... So Gwen goes to the door and can see through like a crack in the makeshift door that there are men sitting at a table and their Aes Sedai rings plus a big gold ring is sitting on the table. Yeah, that's Lan's ring. Yes. So the men are talking about some guy t coming to buy 
three Aes Sedai that they have captured. Yeah. Great. So it's kind of funny because it's the whole like who would buy Aes Sedai. Mm -hmm. And in the last sequence. I for sure thought it was that. You know who I thought it was? Who? The Lord Salmon of Tyr. Or like, oh, I thought I, you were going to say, like, probably the Shan Chen who would be buying Aes Sedai. No, I don't think the Shan Chen are over here right now. Okay, that's fair, I, too. There's but it's no like, way. Like, the Shan Chen are out of my mind until I see them come back to, like, we hear about them coming back to the shores. Yeah, right? yeah. Right? Like, okay, to get okay. across country to Kyrian. So, like, who's buying? Unless they're sailing all around. But I really, I don't know. I don't know. I Shan Chen did not cross my mind. But what did cross my mind was the fact that Tyr hates Aes Sedai. That's true too. And then And they're go- clearly going and that way. And we got so. this stuff about that Lord Salmon who really wants to murder and like basically destroy the White Tower. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought it was something to do with the High Lords of Tyr paying people to like capture Aes Sedai in the wild. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't know what they're going to do with them, execute That's them good. or something. That's literally where my mind went. Well, it's it's kind of funny, too, because uh, one of the things we got referenced to when Elaine was going on her whole, like, Kyrian history lecture yeah, is that slavery as a concept in Randland, in the borders, we're not talking about Chanchan because yeah, clearly yeah. they have Clearly. It. But slavery in Randland like isn't buying really a, people it's isn't not a, a thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. Because apparently that's what happens to the Kyrianin is that when they go into the IL Waste, they get sold as animals in the lands beyond the Waste. And then Varen's like, I don't even know how you could sell a man or a woman. Like, that doesn't make sense to me how yeah. you could sell someone. So clearly that concept is a little bit foreign. At right. This point. Which is why I sort of thought that maybe it was this like forsaken type guy like i yeah you yeah. know like i don't actually know who this lord salmon is i don't think he's a re- you did say that it's probably land fear <laughs> i did say that so i really i thought that's where my mind went anyway because yeah. i know tear hates i said i and that part's all strange so it was surprising okay to yeah. me what we find out next so one of the men is worried about these women waking up because he's smarter than the rest of them i guess yeah i mean if i said i wake up they're gonna friggin <laughs> yeah and you didn't even tie them up like you didn't even try to restrain them if they were to wake up like, here's here's a question for you and it's yeah. kind of kind of relevant to the magic system let's say that the Aes Sedai is bound like maybe hands behind her back or something yeah yeah could she still channel if her hands and stuff are bound or do yes. you need to perform actions no i think she could channel okay so like what would tying yeah, I up think do she, then nothing but they don't know that 100 percent. that's have, true that's a good they point <laughs> could have at least put some sort of barrier because if they need to wake up and then free themselves at least there'll be noise and you'll be alert alerted them. yeah like there are steps you take when you kidnap someone but <laughs> let me tell you i'm gonna write a book on it you, no, you just conk them on the head kidding. and then you tie them up and then <laughs> yeah you don't let them just like yeah not be tied up in a, <laughs> a room. terrible conversation this is okay so... let's let's keep going <laughs> okay so the guy's like don't worry what i gave them they'll be out till morning yeah this is the best. He's like, my granny told me. And it's like, oh, good. I'm glad your granny is the source of information here. Like, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, Egwene goes over and wakes up Nynaeve by shaking her and she immediately <laughs> just wakes up. Yeah. I don't so, know if she was like already like kind of almost awake because yeah. like Nynaeve's eyes like I don't know I think it's described as like dart open yeah, or flash something. Yeah, flash open and then she like covers her mouth real fast. Yeah. So. It's kind of like a little bit of a weird yeah, thing. Yeah, but Egwene tells her what's going on here. Yeah. So Nynaeve says that these idiot men gave them sleep well root mixed with wine, which just helps you sleep when you have a headache. So all they've really done is help them with their headaches after being conked on the head. Yeah. So great. Excellent. And I love the thought process here of Egwene. Your granny should have strangled you in your cradle. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, I get that she's kind of upset about the whole being kidnapped thing, but. Yeah, we've also <laughs> gotten the insult before in the previous books. I don't know if we've ever talked about it, but I've personally noted it. The insult that you're going to wish your father, father never, never laid, laid eyes, eyes on, on your mother. mother. Yeah. That is like, it's this. It's a class. It's, it's great. Like it's classic. Very so. similar. It's so yeah. funny. So, Nynaeve goes over to Elaine. But turns out her skull is 
cracked and she's like basically going to die. Yeah. So Nynaeve works herself up getting super pissed off and then can heal her. Yeah. So that's good. It's like, oh, Elaine's almost dead, but just no, wait. No, no, she's, she's okay. not. Well, it's also good that Nynaeve is clearly like able to work herself up in this, like this method works for now. I guess. It's still It's a weird method, bad. but it's like it works. So is she going to be, and we talked about this already, but like the Hulk thing of being always angry, right? So like, is that going to be Nynaeve's way to get past the the thing, the issue? maybe maybe i don't know maybe don't know. the more she does it she'll be able to get herself to that point quicker because that's what we need time. is a naive who's instantly fired up yeah <laughs> instead of like slowly working building all that anger yeah i don't know okay but regardless they're all three they're all up they're all alive we're all good and not bound yep so so naive heals elaine and this is a really interesting point i think because Egwene gets her hand on elaine's mouth to stop her from screaming but then she gets some like residual healing of what Nynaeve did that's true and now her headache is completely gone hey but she also i don't know if she's never been if she's ever been healed or something because like the Egwene has been the way she by describes Nynaeve. the sensation here though is like it, crazy like yeah, almost the, like she hadn't experienced it before well the way i kind of interpret that is like Nynaeve is doing like a super powerful blast of healing and Egwene's getting like residual contact healing yeah so and it's just like in context she wasn't expecting it we do know Nynaeve, Nynaeve has a hundred percent healed Egwene before yeah well no 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 but no, like no. i know i know con. i know yeah. i know like, yeah i know that but since Egwene has been able to channel herself, understands exactly what's going on, and since Nynaeve has clearly powered up and is able to use Sidar. Yeah, you got my it. My mind blank there. I you haven't had it. that issue yeah. in a while. <laughs> to heal. Because I think when she like healed Egwene as a child, it was sort of like different an accident yeah. and just sort of like these things that happened to her. Whereas now this is like on purpose channeling a million weaves of the web and the threads so <laughs> yeah i don't know it seems it. it seems more intense it does so Nynaeve says that doing it that way was like peeling off her own skin yeah again we don't really know what that means no i have no idea what that so... means so and elaine says she's tired and hungry yeah hey she's okay so they fill Elaine in on what's going on, and then they go to look through the cracks in the door to see what's going on out there. Yeah. Because and you got to imagine it's like Elaine's probably on the bottom, and yeah. then Egwene's probably in the middle, and Nynaeve's like probably on the top. Like the floating heads yeah. thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's what's happening here. Okay. So the men out there are now joined by three Merdral. Boom. These are the guys who are here to buy them. So that's bad. I was actually not expecting that. And one of them is telling the men that these three Aes Sedai are the ones that he seeks. Yes, and they know that because of Land's, the Land's ring. ring. So that's bad because it's confirmation. Like, we know the three men that Perrin saw in The World of Dreams with Beelzebub talking about who's marked for death and who's marked for taking. Yep. These girls are clearly meant for taking still. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can recognize them by Nynaeve's ring that land gave yeah i don't know exactly if they're marked for taking or marked for death because we also know that there was a gray man who shot a crossbow at them yeah it, but it's the whole issue is like if they were marked for death why wouldn't they just like kill them and keep their heads or something as proof like there's so many easier ways to well, like no 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 the merdral is gonna take them and then... but but then bring them to bales <laughs> a secondary location <laughs> yeah but seriously i don't know I don't know about this whole for taking and for death thing. Okay, okay. I don't know. They were clearly marked to be assassinated. Yeah, but that was like a while ago and now. And so things change. Things change. All right, whatever. That was like a week ago. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll move on because then some crazy shit happens. So, Egwene uses a tiny trickle of the power to weaken the like lock and chain at the door. Yeah, hoping that the Fades won't feel it. But the Fade says, are you sure they're asleep? I itch. Yes. So it seems like the fades notice an itching sensation. Well, they can tell when channeling's happening. Yeah, but well, we already knew that. We do know that yeah. they can tell, but we didn't know that it was like an itch that yeah. they feel 
of the power being used. Yeah. And then the lock and chain fall to the floor and then all hell breaks out. Yes, this is because, this is the fan favorite scene by the way. Well, of course, yeah. because you know, not because the women do anything, but because a bunch of Aiel bust through the door and just like slaughter everyone. And it's so well written because when it says like Black Veil death flowing in from the night, yeah. you're like, wait, are the fades the you know yeah. Black Veil? But it's like, no, the Aiel bust in from the outside, and they are the Black Veil death. Yeah, such I a have cool to scene. Tell you, I was disappointed. Why? I wanted. Elaine, Egwene, and Nynaeve yeah. to unleash on these people. So here's a question. We know that there's 12 guys in the room and 100 yeah. in the camp outside. Yeah. Do you think that the consciences of Egwene, Nynaeve, and Elaine, could they slaughter 100 and some people and I don't be okay necessarily with it? think they needed to slaughter everyone. That's not what I thought was going to happen. Oh, okay. I thought maybe they were going to, you know, do the whole ground erupting thing and escape scare everyone away yeah and get away okay like, i thought they were going to save themselves okay and i don't love the fact that they didn't get to save themselves okay I, they do have a slight redemption here a little bit yeah because they get to murder the fades yeah that's which is true great which probably helped a lot because they might have a lot to, and, yeah. the, and the aiel explains why that helped so much but I had to go back and read again. So I was like, okay, wait a minute. What just happened? Yeah. And I had to read that page again. And then I thought, ah, oh, because they're just still standing there not doing anything. They haven't even <laughs> opened the door yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted them to save themselves. Okay. Well, maybe they'll get another chance I'm at some point. Too. Sure. I'm yeah. sure they're going to get themselves into situations. They're literally headed into a land fear trap right now. Uh -huh, so yes, like, they you know, are. Let's, so... just, let's just hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so the Aiel are about to like take on these fades and then Nynaeve opens the door and Egwene says enough of this and channels fire and then all the fades like burst into flames and Elaine and Nynaeve are there helping and then something shoots out of Nynaeve's hands a bar of white light right at the fades and then they just disappear from existence yeah basically like disintegrate they cease to exist yeah and Elaine nope yeah, and Egwene thinks about Balefire, she doesn't but just, doesn't she, say anything. But she knows that what she just saw, that's Balefire. Yeah. She doesn't know how she knows, but she knows that that's what it is. Yeah. So, cool. We've now been introduced to Balefire, officially. Yeah, officially. Yeah. Like a bar of white light that makes you disappear. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Couple things that we gotta go over. Okay. And just kind of like, just for the fans... The thrum, thrum, thrum scene oh, yeah. where the Aiel are circling the fades and they're like, dance with me, Shadow Man. That's one of the fan favorite yeah, scenes, yeah. like just 100%. And I want to see that brought to life. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do get the fact that two Aiel got killed in this room here. Yeah. And then when the girls step out of the door and they're all embracing the source about to like channel out these fades, we get that one of the Aiel, who is a woman, gasps loudly when they walk out of the room. And we do know that that one woman in the room is, is Avienda. Avienda. So that's, again, confirmation. She sees these three girls just, like, supercharged, ready to channel, and she's like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so Egwene notes that there are all these Aiel standing in the room with them and sees that one of them is Avienda, and then Nynaeve goes to the fallen Aiel from the fight, and one of the men says she doesn't need to do that because they have taken Shadow Man Steel, so there's no saving them. Yeah. And Nynaeve sees that one of the fallen is Dalen. Yes. So this is, I kind of imagine like Min's viewing in this situation. Uh. Like if Min had have seen Dylan uh, and we know that she like for sure, she's pretty much destined for death here. Yeah. Right. So if Min saw that and then like Nynaeve saves her, yeah. Min's viewing is still like going to come true. I know we didn't get yeah, a viewing yeah, for yeah. this, but it's like, it's that mentality of like, that's your destiny. You're going to die. Yeah. And you were basically brought back so that you could help one more time yeah and Nynaeve just thinks of it as a waste of healing yeah yeah and Elaine apologizes to the Aiel for interrupting their dance she's again she's trying to figure out the Aiel customs well and she's, she's a little to bit sort through too it. formal a little bit too royal a little in bit my yeah opinion no I, I agree for sure and the older man the Aiel 
named Ruark. Yeah, so I'm going to do something here that's going to upset a bunch of people. This is like a Liana situation again, Uh where you read it as Leanne, but it's Liana. Ruark, we all pronounce it Ruark, and I say we all, but like I pronounce it Ruark in the audiobooks, uh, like it's pronounced Ruark, but in the glossary definition, it's pronounced as one syllable, Rourke. Rourke. Yeah. Okay. And I think I'm reading that glossary definition properly because it's typically split up by syllables and it's Yeah, it's Rourke. not. Rourke. Yeah. But everybody pronounces it Ruark. Ruark. And I'm going to keep going with Ruark. Okay. Because <laughs> that's how I do it. Okay. So. <laughs> so he says <laughs> that these <laughs> fades have taken some of them down in a fight, but they're glad for the Aes Sedai. So, like, don't apologize we're, yeah. Because they would have taken us down. Yeah, there's like no saying that we would have won this fight. So it's just, again, kind of an interesting concept for Aiel mentality towards death. Like we clearly know the Aiel like have this embracing of like, you know, when it's your time, it's your time kind of thing. Well, something about like meeting death. Yeah, like you yeah. meet death, face, like you're not going to, you know, it comes for everybody. But Ruark is saying like, hey, I get that we're all going to die one day, but I'm not eager to meet it right now today if you can just go ahead and do what you did. Yeah. Like, it's cool. Yeah. And so Nynaeve asks how Avienda found them. And she's like, oh, I followed you. Yeah. Duh. And we are too far away once you got captured, so we just followed you here. Yeah. And then she says that she knew that these other Aiel were here. But she was surprised to see a clan chief. Her own clan chief. Her own clan chief. Yeah, so Ruark. Ruark. And she's like, who's watching the clan? Again, and this here. is, yeah, this is, again, a bunch of, like, Aiel stuff we get to learn about. So Yeah, a bunch. And this is where I just write, okay, Brett, take it away. I need, awesome. okay. I need some help. <laughs> so, long story short, Ruark is the clan chief of the Tardad Dail, which is Avienda's clan. So, Sept Chiefs, and like we kind of talked about at the fun fact, Septs are within the clan. So, the Sept Chiefs take their turn and trying to figure out who actually wants to become a clan chief once they, like, get a little bit of taste of, like, this is what you have to do as a clan chief. So, the clan chiefs who want to become a clan chief go to this Ruidian, and that's how they pick a clan chief. We don't know anything else about that. Oh, also, to make people angry, Ruidian in the audiobooks is pronounced Ruidin. I say Ruidian, so... Cool. Anyways, so then he wouldn't have come except for, and we get these are the names of wise ones, Amos, Bear, Mulane, and Sienna. Uh-huh. And most importantly, the dreams said that I must go. Yeah. And we also get some Aiel humor. Yeah. Do you really want to die fat in your bed? <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. Well, one of these wise ones, we don't know which, one of them is Ruark's wife. Wife. So. Which is interesting because I didn't know that the wise ones could marry. Well, they're not Aes Sedai saying I guess, we're, not, we're not going to marry. So That's true. I guess what my mind went to is they're not allowed to wed the spear. Yeah, and wise right? ones aren't wedded to the spear. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but they can just. But they can just be married. Yeah. Well, it sounds like wise ones don't fight, in that sense. No. So. No, no, no. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like that's where my mind went. Yeah. Because I knew that they weren't allowed to be quote wedded to the spear. Yeah. And if they were made into the spear to become a wise one, you have to give up the spear, kind of thing. And so then to hear, that one is his wife, I was confused just because of the whole wedding thing but yeah it makes sense it makes sense and we get more aiel humor where it's like a man caught between his wife and a wise one often wishes for a dozen old enemies to fight instead a man caught between a wife and three wise ones and the wife as a wise one herself must consider trying to slay slight uh sight blinder because like yeah you gotta fight the devil himself oh so <laughs> funny uh, so Egwene is interested in his dreams yeah <laughs> <laughs> and not obviously his bad jokes yeah and so it turns out the wise ones share as much knowledge as the Aes Sedai do. Yeah, they're like, we don't, yeah, we're not we're telling. We're not telling you anything. <laughs> so that's interesting, though. But they do tell people where to go based on these dreams. Yeah. So Ruark picks up Lan's ring and is like, hey, this is a Malkieri ring, you know, of the This kings. is crazy. Ruark, the Aiel clan chief, knows, like, of Lan. He yeah. knows who Lan is. Not personally, no, but it's like... No, but he's like, they rode with the Shinerians against the Aeel in my father's time, and then he speaks about the baby king. Yeah. So, so this is like a known thing to the Aeel. Yep. Like, that's pretty crazy that Lan's like, Lan's a dude that people know. Famous. He's super famous. So Nynaeve doesn't want to hear anything about this and just says, you know what? We're going to take these men's horses and leave. Yeah. And they're like, now? At it's, night? Yeah. And she's like, uh, no. At yeah. sunrise. 
And then I had a thought. Sure. Where's Bella? Is Bella still at Tarvalon? They just didn't bring her? Yeah, most likely. Because it's not like that like they didn't leave with horses. Yeah. And then like leave her on that ship, right? She, Bella's most likely in Tarvalon still. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the last time we saw her. Yeah. Okay. Because I was wondering, like, they went on this, like, trip and didn't bring their own horses? Well, they were getting on a boat. Yeah, but you can bring horses on a boat. Sometimes. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm really hoping that she's not just, like, left on that boat that's stranded in the river. Well, we got to talk about that boat, too, because there's something that was said in this chapter that is a little bit not so good. About this boat? Yeah, the boat that they were on that they left. Oh. Yeah, back when all these bandits were still alive, and yeah. they were talking about like selling the Aes Sedai to a, a buyer, the guy says, good prices for Aes Sedai if you have the belly to deal with the right br- buyer, not so safe as slitting the crew's throat on a trader ship, eh? So it's implied that these are the bandits who like left the boat so that the boat they were just on would get crashed, and then he mentions, like, hey, it's not as easy as slitting the throats of a crew on a ship. Oh. So the question is, like, what happened to the crew that's on that boat with this whole time lapse? Like, did they also just get murdered by these bandits? Oh. Yeah. Well, I I think I just took that to mean that's the ship that is already sunk. You know, the ship that they ran into. Okay. And, like, that crew. So that's the planted that they killed and left that boat there. So, okay. I don't know if they planted it, but they were, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it more because we get another reference to this boat. A little bit. Next chapter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So... In the morning, Elaine, Egwene, and Nynaeve ride their horses out of there, and Egwene calls her gray horse Mist, yeah. which is nice, and the Aeel are on foot, but keep up without issue, and then we get some Aeel jokes that are hilarious Pretty about funny. racing 20 miles against a horse. Yeah, and that's the whole like endurance running. That's legit a thing that people can do is they can beat horses in yeah. a foot race. So, so they... Finally reach this village. Did you notice how many Isle all together attacked the camp? No. So there were 24 okay. that fought the 112-ish plus gotcha. the three fades. Okay. And then only three died outside of the two that fought the fades. Gotcha. These guys were stupid, though. And I don't think they were very good fighters. <laughs> that's, Not still, that it, that's still a lot. No, no, no. Yeah. I, know, I know the Aeol are good fighters. And I keep on saying that the people they're fighting aren't good fighters. Yeah. But I think that because the Aeol are such good fighters... The majority of people in Randland, like even... Aren't going to be up to par. Aren't going to be even remotely up to par. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so they reach this village, Jureen. Yeah. And it is not on fire, like Yay, I predicted. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is where the Aeol go their separate way. And Ruark says that perhaps they will meet again before the change. Yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah. Well, we do know that there's like they're supposed to leave the threefold land. Yeah. But we don't really when know. When a bunch of prophecies. When stuff happens, so. Come true. So the village is being held by Andoran soldiers, and Elaine hides her face from them, but then, like, doesn't get recognized. Yeah, and it's just like. Shocked. Just in case. But it's like, yeah. how many of these guys would have ever seen you, anyways? Yeah. So. And so. Okay, I have to talk about this specifically. Sure. Because I'm not okay. The sexual harassment part? Yeah. Okay. So. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Egwene has a weird moment that, like, doesn't need to be in here even a little bit. Sure. About the men of the village thinking she's as pretty as Elaine. And she needs that, like, recognition like, she doesn't want to kiss them, but it's nice to be recognized that she's as pretty as Elaine. Sure. Which is K. And then it turns out that all these men are, like, super gross, and Nynaeve has to, like, slap one of them. But then Nynaeve is not, quote, entirely displeased well, that's what with the Gwen attention. Thinks. Yeah. And I just have to put on record here... That sexual harassment and unwanted sexual advances are not a compliment. Like, that's not good. Like, that's not a compliment. Yeah, I you get that. You shouldn't take that, ooh, he pinched my butt when I didn't want him to <laughs> yeah. because he thinks I'm pretty. Yeah. Like. Don't do it. Along with it's so killing of people, of babies, and enslaving people. Yeah. On record. Killing whales. Don't do any of those things. I know. This yeah. is a little bit different 
because this doesn't further any plot line. This doesn't do anything for the story except give our strong female characters some, like, vanity. Like, I don't know. Like, for Elaine and Egwene and Nynaeve to be not entirely displeased when men give them attention. Yeah. Like, these gross, random, disgusting men. Like, it was just unnecessary. I sure. just didn't love it being in here. That's yeah. all. No, that's fair. I just, and I need to point that out because the first time I read it, I thought, ugh, gross. And then the second time I read it doing my notes, I really thought, no, like this isn't <laughs> good. This isn't okay. So I didn't sure. love it. No, I didn't I like that. That's fair. And I have to, like, I'll move on from it, but I have to, <laughs> okay. I just have to say that. Okay. So. They go on and they find one boat on a single stone dock and it's called the Darter, even though it's this like big, slow barge of a boat. Yeah. And. I mean, this is going to be really important too for our like time frames because we can kind of start placing next chapter where they're at. Yeah. But now they're on the slowest ship that ever shipped anywhere. Ever. And the captain laughs at Nynaeve when she asks if the boat is fast and then he goes, I passed that blue crane up river stuck because that's what going fast gets you. Yeah. So poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And plus none of the other faster boats will stop here. Well, it's also a good thing that like, you know, the girls didn't wait on the boat though, because they'd still be on that boat. Cause it sounds like either they're all still there yeah. or possibly murdered. All we murdered. Don't know, so. <laughs> it's hard to say. Yeah. So... They load up their horses and off they go. And I just need to say, I wish I had a zoomed in map of this area. Sure. What? You know how sometimes we get those extra maps in the middle of the book? What do you want a map of? Just, I want to know how far they are from, where is it, Erin Gill or something like that? Okay, like where Matt is. Where and Matt Tomar? is and where Tyr is and where Tarvalin is. Like how far have they actually traveled? Yeah. Between Tarvalin and that other place. Yeah, I mean, you could probably say about halfway. I think that's a fair. I estimate. know, but that's a complete guess. I'm, yeah, I'm telling know, you, I want a map. An exact place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's the end of this chapter. Yes. And just before we move on to the next chapter, like I said, I just wanted to point out the whole like specific phrasing that's important. Sure. When Ruark is talking about like Land's ring right before that, when he picks it up, he does mention the same phrasing that the maidens had previously talked about with the three women traveling to Tyr. And he says, three Aes Sedai traveling to Tyr. And the other Aiel glance at one another as if they don't want Egwene and her companions to notice. So it's this repetition of the phrasing of like the three eyes to die traveling to tear, three eyes to die traveling to tear. So that's like clearly something they're also looking for. It's like the strange sign that they are looking for. So yeah. Okay. Sounds like another prophecy or something. Sounds like the yeah, you have a lot of prophecies they're looking for. Sounds like they're looking for stuff and it's probably because of these wise ones, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So then we get right into chapter 40, A Hero in the Night. An interesting picture we get, the Camelin lion picture. Why is that interesting? I don't know. I guess because... The, li- the lion is of Andor. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean, I guess. A- Aaron Gill is in Andor. Okay. But even the Kyrian inside is taken by Andor. Yeah. Well, it's the Civil War thing. They're yeah. They're just like, yeah. So like... Aaron Gill's in... Is, is an Andor in town, though. Okay. So. Okay. So that's all that means. Is that's now probably they're... all that means. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're in Andor. Yeah. It's well, Andor. and I mean, like, I figured that, but it's like, I is don't there know. more to it? Yeah. It there's been nothing like a, more yeah. to it. So I was excited because we get into a Matt point of view. Yeah, you're getting spoiled here. So. Well, I just want to know where they are, where they're going. Yeah, I know. It could you. have been a Tom point of view. <laughs> it could have been someone else. If we like figure out where someone else is, I'm just excited. That we're learning where other people are. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. So Matt and Tom are on the Grey Gull and it's pulling into Erangel. Matt notes how busy this place is, all bustling with like people who have like their personal items and they're all just sort of like wandering around. And then we get that the Kyrianan shore also has the white lion banner of Andor flying. Yeah, there are a ton of refugees from the Kyrianan civil war. It is a bad situation this altogether. Is super bad. Yeah. And Matt thinks about how politics don't interest him 
And as long as people stop calling him Andorin, he'll be fine. Yeah, he doesn't want to join the Andorin army. Yeah. <laughs> get recruited, right? Which I think is some sort of foreshadowing. What What do you mean? I think he's going to become yeah. some... <laughs> get recruited into the Andorin army yeah, somehow? Yeah, I think he's going to become some, like, general. It's in his blood. Well, it's possible. He's yeah. Gonna, I think that's what's going to happen. That would be funny. Him. He keeps, he's like opposing it so much, so strongly. Yeah, I yeah. think it's a foreshadow. Okay. I think Matt's going to become a soldier. Awesome. Yeah. Of the Andorran army? Probably, because he specifically <laughs> said, don't make me be a part of your don't army. Don't make me do it. And then he's like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So, okay. I like that. Uh-huh. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. RJ doesn't put things like this in for nothing. Usually not. Usually so, not. So, it's there. And I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. And we'll see what comes back. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be so funny? Because then wouldn't Elaine technically be like his boss, sort of? Because she's made the reference like, don't you want to be like a good Andorran? Oh, you yes. Know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, see, there's yeah. even more tidbits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's for sure happening now. Okay. So we get a little bit of a recap about what happened on the rest of their journey. Because apparently it was a very quick journey. Yeah. Like, real, like it was pretty fast. And so Matt finally broke down and showed the captain his letter and said he was delivering it to the queen from the daughter heir and i think not great matt yeah probably be showing people that kind of crap probably don't but i also don't think that malia a hundred percent believes him he doesn't no he thinks he's some sort of like secret agent spy person so it works out (laughs) it does like in a really weird way yeah so we also get that Matt gambled a ton on the boat, leaving richer than he started. Yeah. And we also get that he lifted the seal of Elaine's letter and was disappointed to find nothing interesting written in there. Yeah, there's like a bunch of really important like little tidbits. Yeah. So like in regards to Matt's luck. So he gambled, but he didn't win every, every time, time like he did that that night. Right. Where it was like off Which the is charts. Like he's relieved about. Which again, if you're gambling, probably good. Because if you go into the you know casino and you win literally every hand for, and they're going to be like, oh, you're cheating. They're going to arrest you for fraud. <laughs> but like if you win, <laughs> more than you lose that's the good way to do it right yes. so yeah yeah and then tom also looked at the note from yeah elaine and he also didn't find anything so matt thinks that this stupid letter is the reason those men came after him yeah. in tarvalin and tom hasn't been able to find like any code and like he knows it. to like a cipher or whatever although tom does mutter a lot about the game of houses yeah well it's kind of like so... he's looking for stuff and he, even he can't seemingly find anything and it's weird because the girls also based on Egwene's dream think that matt's being chased because of this letter yeah but it's not the letter it's just it's that matt, matt. It's, it's just matt's matt, matt. It's he's just matt. Yeah. so yeah so Tom puts on his glee vamps cloak before they get off the boat and he tells Matt that things are really bad here because everyone looks like they are starving and it's going to cost Matt a fortune for a room and a meal tonight. Yeah. So he better stop eating the way he has been. Yeah. Yeah. Then we find out a little later on that Matt and his hunger has gone back to normal about two days ago and he just wanted to fuck with malia a little more by throwing food overboard which in the in the time is hilarious so there's a reason i don't find this hilarious okay. this pissed me off okay 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 but i was mad at let's Matt. just think like don't defend malia so this is the big thing i'm Matt, not but okay I get it. Civil I'm War, people starving, don't, don't waste I don't like food. Matt's actions here. But Mally is being a dick because he's been like saying things where he wants all the Aes Sedai to be chained up because that's what High Lord Salmon wants and he wants Tar Valen to yeah, burn. Yeah. And Matt's friends are all Aes Sedai. And even though he's like, I don't want to stay out of Aes Sedai business. That doesn't mean you throw all his food overboard. He's fucking with Malia as I much know as he, he can. Is. I so, know he is, but yeah. I don't like it i like it interesting i, I, I don't like I it i finally that... don't like something matt's doing well you know and he's you're like defending him well it's <laughs> mally is such a terrible person yeah i know that doesn't mean that you have to also be a terrible person to that him. that is what you stoop to the level of the person that <laughs> <laughs> uh, i absolutely believe in i it. do have to say that matt a hundred percent redeems himself yeah a couple of times he does in this chapter but this specifically pissed me off but also keep in mind what did malia not stop for 
Yes, I know. I yeah. know. Don't defend me. I feel like you're defending Malia. I'm not defending again. Malia. Okay. I just don't like Matt's actions. Is it the wasting food part? It's the wasting food part. Ah, uh, whatever. He's just being a little jerk about it. <laughs> like, take all his money and gambling, whatever. Like, that's Malia's fault for continuing to gamble with Matt, even though he's winning, winning, winning. If there weren't a bunch of refugees here who were starving, yeah. would you feel the same way? No. Okay. I don't think so. I think that this is just like particularly <laughs> Circumstantial. bad. Turns out Malia has to stop on his way to Tier to restock food because Matt basically cleaned him out of all his stores. I just thought that was very bad and very rude. Yeah, situationally just don't mess bad. mess with people's food after taking like basically all their money <laughs> and then now food costs so much money because We're gonna of the Civil War. We're going to have to disagree here. I just don't like it. I know. Okay, so Matt thinks that Malia deserved it. And says, what about that ship stuck yesterday? Yeah. We could have stopped to help and we didn't. And we get a timeline. Because of the fact that Matt saw the boat, we now have a timeline for who left first. The girls. The girls left first in the afternoon. Yeah. Matt stayed up all night and said he was going to like hang <laughs> out in the city. He gambled all to, night. Well, he was supposed to go by the evening. He still would have let... He didn't leave his room until the evening. Yeah. So... So then he stayed until the next morning, then left, and the girls were like halfway down or whatever. Yeah. And then Matt caught up with them and passed them, and now he's on. He's in Erangel, and the girls are now on the slowest ship that's ever, you know, existed, apparently. Right. So, Probably just behind. Yeah. In terms of... Because I don't know how long it takes to actually go down on a fast boat. Yeah, but keep in mind that the girls had were like captured and then they stayed until the next day and yes. then continued. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. And then Matt says that he'll help anyone who can pay. Only fools do something for nothing. Yeah. And then I was like, well, what are you getting from this mission? Well, it's, it's what he says versus what he actually does, oh, right? he's so. just like, I don't know who he thinks he is, but he is not who he thinks he is. He's, yeah. Well, it's the know? whole, like, internal monologue. <laughs> he's like, oh, never do something for nothing. But it's like, you're literally going on this entire mission to deliver a letter, and what are you getting out of it? Well, he got to escape Tarvalin. I guess so. But, like... It's the whole only do something for other, and then he imme yeah. immediately gives the poor family money. Immediately. That's the difference. Yeah, because, like, so. as they're walking, Matt sees a woman with two crying kids, and on impulse, he takes out a handful of coins, gives it to the woman, and says, Get them something to eat. And then that's when I said, Okay, that's better, Matt. Yeah. That's better. So they see a Andoran guard, and Matt asks him where they can find an inn to stay. And the guy basically just, like, laughs in their faces and says, nope, not here. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's kind of interesting because when we see Tom's reactions to things, because clearly it's getting bad. They're eating horses now. Like, that's the next thing that you're going to have to go through. Based on everything you said so far, you think that Tom's the one who, like, killed Galdrian. Right, or, yeah. Or, like, inadvertently caused his death through scheming. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> so the reason why Kyrian is in civil war is because Galdrian's dead, which means that it's Tom's basically fault. Tom's fault that all these people are, like, starving refugees now. Right. So, well, I mean, like, it's also all the people's fault. Do I mean that, too, but, like, the thing that set off the civil war, it wasn't just that, like, Barthanus got murdered. It's that the That's king part also. Of it too, though. It's like both most powerful people in Kyrian both died at the exact same time, basically. Yeah. So it's like, you know, we don't know what killed Barthanus. You assume that Tom killed Galdrian. So it's yeah. like, shoot. <laughs> shoot. Okay. So Tom wants to know why the queen isn't sending food. And the guard says that it's like really bad. There are people crossing over from Kyrian too fast to grind flour or even get wagons carrying food from farms here. And turns out, though, it's not going to be a problem for much longer because the order starts tomorrow. No one else crosses into Andor. Yeah, and apparently, like, we already know Morgays has a soft spot for, like, poor people and the hungry people. Yeah, because and Tom she's got... says that. Yeah, but we've heard of the Queen's... Because she the beggar's purse or something the like queen's that? bounty yeah the queen's bounty it's like basically yeah, yeah. anyone can come and get like food and money or whatever but yeah it's just it's the civil war and maybe it's just necessary because they can't keep up yeah i think it's more than that i don't what do you mean i don't How? know because tom's questioning th that and then matt says well who else would it have come from and then we go dot 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 and don't talk about <laughs> it again 
So it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. It's kind of like the order about all of the doors closed, all the gates closed. In Faldara. In Faldara. Okay. And then they're okay. like, well, who else would have given the order? It had to have been Egomar. It had but... to have been Egomar. Okay. Who, who else could have given such an order? Yeah. I don't know. And then that was like a mystery. So this kind of seems like the same type of thing. <laughs> okay. Just because of the way Matt's like, well, who else would have you know and then i didn't we, even connect that okay, and then we yeah. never yeah no we don't talk about it we don't it talk anymore. about it again so i speculated right away i was like oh maybe margie's didn't some sort of fake order to aaron gill for the refugees yeah well maybe it's a fake order to all the entire border of like I mean, anyone crossing over into andor maybe it didn't come from more gays maybe it's just civil war <laughs> well yeah but like yeah maybe it's not more gays making the decision. Okay. I don't know who it would be. I yeah, I know that's the. <laughs> I need more, but I'm just my radar is up. Okay, sure. I just, yeah. I just need to point it out. That's a, okay. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's good. So Matt and Tom go off. They find an inn called the Riverman, and the innkeeper laughs in their faces about a bed for the night. And then Tom's like, "Yes, but have you noticed? I'm a Glee man." You know what? He's not having any luck because that the, didn't work on the boat either. And the innkeeper just laughs at him again. So they leave, they get the same story in a bunch of other inns, and then they get to the Good Queen Inn, and Matt sees a dice cup in a cupboard and asks about a place to sleep in the stable. Yeah. And the innkeeper says no, but then Matt pulls out a gold coin and a bunch of other coins, and the guy says, fine, but don't disturb the horses. Yeah. And... Matt asks how much for two of those horses. And the guy's like, I'm not selling my horses. And then Matt's like, I'll pay you double and play a game of dice for them. Yeah. So here you go. Gambling pays off. And of course he wins. Of course he does. Yeah. So he thinks about how the moment he shook the dice cup, he had all but known what the pips would be. Ooh. Okay. So this is like another level. Like he's almost has this like, not just intense luck or control over games of chance. Sure. It's almost like he has like some predictive powers. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that would be also beneficial when gambling or doing things, because if you know the outcome, like what if it could be. If you know be, you're going to lose or whatever it is, and then, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's I useful not just maybe in the application of, you know, gambling, because like there's only so many... But if you sort helpful. of can <laughs> have this intuitive nature about you, yeah, maybe it's not just dice. Cool, a little bit. It of like, probably is just dice, uh, but <laughs> you know, it's kind of like you can see a second or two in the future or something, right? Like uh, you know, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, so they get into the stable. It's like thundering outside. There's gonna be rain tonight. So Matt and Tom settle into the loft in the stable, and then as Tom is smoking a pipe and matt is laying down staring at the roof matt hears someone coming into the stable and it is a slender woman with a bunch of small braids and you know who i thought it was leandrin leandrin oh my goodness because she's got a bunch of braids yeah hey that's she, really funny she really does <laughs> she's the only woman we've that I think... Well, it's a good thing she's not wearing, like, gray and brown and green, because you would have not picked up on that at <laughs> all, <up>. so... <laughs> <laughs> this time I would have. Well, it's also funny, because the last time we, like, saw Matt in a barn with a pretty woman, it was when him and Rand almost got murdered. Yeah. So, like, I was also thinking, is your high Ooh, alert going for, like, that, friend. so... No, it wasn't, actually. Yeah. But <laughs> I thought Leandrin, yeah. especially because she's in a silk dress that looks worn from travel ah. and we have no idea where leandrin is no we have no idea. i don't know why she'd be <laughs> here but i was like oh my god and then to top things off really confirming to me yeah that it's leandrin <laughs> until i find out it's not yeah but she takes out a lantern and suddenly lights a flame in it like real fast like really fast real fast almost like she channeling channeled the power. the power okay not at all what it is not even a little bit but even tom notes that was fast and he's like oh she could have set fire to the stable and i just went oh my god yeah like th i thought this was so much more intense i mean like it's intense but this is such a funny chapter too because like very <laughs> the, like, rarely that writing is yeah. so intentional 
I feel like I'm supposed to think that that's Leandrin. I think that's a fair bet. I'm supposed to. You know, and I it's think. this is just a funny chapter because like very rarely do we get to hear you make like a really solid prediction and then immediately find out that you are so wrong. Yeah. It was so funny because you were reading and as soon as we find out that this woman is an illuminator, you're like, son of a bitch. Yeah. I know. <laughs> are you kidding me? Because last chapter we got the vision from Egwene. Yes. It's like, oh, Matt with an illuminator. Who could that be? And, I, and then and you're, you're like, like, no way. And you're like, is it an illuminator? And I was like, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Of Where would he ever come in contact with an illuminator? Obviously not. And I was like, I don't know, Tom, maybe. And you're like, it's a woman. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> But it was so funny because I knew that this was going to happen like right away. Yeah. Okay. So let me get so into good. that. Okay. Because <laughs> so funny. just as Matt decides he's going to like let her know that he's there, the door opens again and four men come in. And then one of the men calls her Aludra and she calls him Tammuz. And my brain just went. It like, oh my god, I know these names. Okay. These are the Illuminators from Kyrian. That Rand that basically Rand blew up the destroyed. chapter house. Yeah. And, and Eludra and Tammuz. And so this I went, is so oh funny. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. It's so funny because ba- it was like probably six months or eight months ago or whatever. so on the nose for Egwene to be like, Matt with Illuminators and fireworks. That's weird. And I just went, well, of course it's not literal fireworks or, oh, <laughs> oh my God. Well, it's really funny too, because way back when we were recording the episode with Ran in the Chapter House, I think you had like, you know, jumped over the names, yeah. Aludra and Tammuz. And yeah. I was like, oh, by the way, their names are Aludra and Tammuz. And you're like, I don't care. <laughs> But it was like, but it's going to matter in like eight months. Yeah. So like, I need you to just like on the record, get this out there. Yeah. That these two and it people... worked because I mean, it's not like I just glazed over it and didn't recognize the names. Yeah. And then had to like read further into the chapter to like know who they were. And understand that there's such a big history because everything yeah. in Kyrian matters so much. Now, Turns so. out a bunch of terrible things have gone down for them. Yeah. Because Aludra has been kicked out of the guild because of the mishap that Aludra thinks Tammuz caused. Yeah, because she was like freaking out at him during that event. Right. But it was Rand and Lanfear. Rand and Lanfear and, and Loyal. Trollocs. And Loyal and was Loyal. there too. So yeah. Yeah, crazy. So Tammuz calls her a fool and then says he wants to cut her throat. And yeah. then Matt suddenly, on impulse, stands <laughs> up, grabs a rope hanging from the ceiling and swings down to confront the men. And then Tom throws him his quarterstaff. And I picture this so dramatic. And Oh, it is dramatic. <laughs> Tom Absolutely. tosses him his quarterstaff down and he knocks out all four men with his quarterstaff. Boom, Just boom, conks boom. them all in the head one yeah. at a time. <laughs> so it's also funny because Tammuz accuses Aludra of selling the secrets. We know that the Illuminators are like super secretive. Yeah. They got a chapter house in Tanchico yeah. and in Kyrian. Yeah. But Aludra says, no, I wasn't like selling the secrets. I'm just hey, selling is fireworks. She... Oh, I wonder so... if she's originally from Tanchico and she could be the woman of Tanchico. Oh, like the, the inn or whatever. Yeah, remember when I was like, <laughs> he's going to meet the woman of Tanchico. <laughs> That's her. No. Figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> no. Maybe. But they do have strange no. accents. Yeah, they do have strange so. accents. Maybe it's a Tanchikoan accent. Well, never know. Never know. Tanchikin? Tanchikin. Tanchikinite? I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Matt asks her why they wanted to kill her, and Tom already knows. Because the secrets of being an illuminator are very important. Yeah. And she says was an illuminator yeah she's kicked out so the rules don't apply because taboos ruined her performance for the king yeah and nearly destroyed the chapter house and she got kicked out of the guild and they blame her for what's happening in kyrian completely because like the king was killed because this fireworks display didn't go off right yeah well it was all a big mess so yikes okay so she says that she needs to leave because these guys will wake up and she needs to get away from them, but she wants to repay Matt and Tom for saving her, but turns out she has no money, but she does have a big cart of fireworks. Hey. So it's also really funny because we do get that reference way back when. Matt has an interest in fireworks uh-huh. and we get that story again about him as like a 10-year-old. Uh-huh. So yeah. it's all kind of coming <laughs> together now. Okay, so... 
Tom says that those are super expensive and she shouldn't give any of them away because she's going to need them to sell to buy food and whatever. And Matt really wants these fireworks. (laughs) And he's only seen them once before. He stole one as a kid or something and tried to cut one open to see what was inside and got in some serious trouble for it. He got cuffed by Bran, the wisdom switched him, and his father strapped him. My gosh, what Could have blown up the village. Well, just like blown off his hand. Yeah, possibly. So (laughs) Aludra is going to give them like an assortment of fireworks, like little ones to big ones, and she explains how they all work and what all of them do and how to light the fuse. So this is really funny, though, because Aludra is like, here, I'm going to give you a lesson so attend and pay attention and as soon as she says that the first thing matt does is reach for them yeah and she like smacks his hand she's She's like like, no "No, pay attention (laughs) you know it's a flashback to teaching in a classroom trying to do a science experiment all right like you literally put everything out and then you say don't touch anything until i say (laughs) and the first thing that all the kids want to do is touch everything well don't put it in reach of me and i won't try and touch it well that's exactly what you have to do yeah and especially when i was um, teaching phys ed don't give kids any equipment until all of the rules to the game are explained yes because if you give like they're not going to listen to you and it's just like a whole thing because of course they want to touch everything before and not listen yeah, yeah. like it's such a child mentality <laughs> to just be like "Ooh, touch things and not listen you to say what... it's a, you say it's a child mentality but i guarantee that it's just you like know, a people it's mentality. a people mentality <laughs> It just reminds me of yeah. children who like can't control their impulses. Yeah. But it's funny. So <laughs> she explains basically what all of them do. She tells them how to light the fuse from far away. And then she says, never cut it open because what's inside, if it touches air, it can explode and you can lose your hand. Yeah. And Matt says, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> and he's all annoyed because, like, he didn't like getting in trouble. Well, apparently it's a lot of fireworks, too, because she's like, these ones, too, like the big ones, don't stay close to them. Uh, the largest run away when you light them. Yeah. And then all of these can probably, like, blow up a house. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Matt's going to walk around oh with, like, God, a friggin' bomb. Oh, my God, this is bomb. so bad. I know. <laughs> it's, oh, man. Yeah. And you know he's not going to set them off. For a fireworks display. For oh, fun. yeah. He's just going to... There's no way. So, here's a I question. I think he's going to use them to, like, legit blow something up. Like, How a many, boat uh, or uh, a house <laughs> or an inn. Like, he's... Why? To what purpose? I have no idea. It'll be for a purpose. Okay. And I'll be rooting for it. And I'll be like, see, I told you he was I gonna... was going to say, how many chapters is it going to take of Matt perspectives yeah. until he tries to cut them open? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think he's actually doing that. Yeah, okay, he, okay. Because I think that Tom would stop that. Yeah, yeah. But I do think that they're going to use all of them at once to In blow some sort something of up method to escape something okay or something i'm trying to think of or things cause blow some up kind now. of distraction yeah. or something like a barn or a stable what or else a, could you blow up a ship <laughs> a ship a house a, a house boat. an inn a person oh somehow some people okay a camp uh, uh okay a f- in a field to cause a distraction destroy a state i don't it's too early <laughs> Too just soon for that? No, just, yeah. Like, maybe if he sets them off, like, in a field or something, and then goes to, like, get away from somewhere, like, he'll use them. Okay. In, in some a, sort in of way that's not fireworks. That's not for, like, watching pretty fireworks in the sky. Okay. And not just, like, selling them for a bunch of cash. No, he's going to dice for coin. Okay. Okay. There's okay. no way. Like, sure. yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, she says that she has to go now. And she will go to Lugard because these idiots expect her to go to Camelin. Yeah. And they're going to wake up soon. Yeah. Which is interesting because I legit thought Matt killed them. Okay, yeah. Just like, yeah. Apparently not. Yeah, because he killed the guys on the boats. Yeah. With his quarterstaff. So there was nothing to make me think that he didn't do that again this time. Yeah, no, that's fair. And so turns out, no, he just knocked him out a little. And Matt feels bad because she doesn't have any money and tries to offer her some of his coins which she doesn't accept and kind of laughs at him for like being naive and then that really pisses him off yeah he's being overly nice right now but like well she okay she's not she's not broke like she has money she has a bunch of fireworks she says i don't have money to offer you she's self-sufficient though like she's she's okay yeah and that's why she's like oh he's young hey like yeah I'm, i'm fine yeah yeah but Anyway, Aludra is getting her cart and about to leave, and Tom asks her about how she made that fire so fast. 
and she said that's her own invention and she won't spill her secrets. So she leaves to go out in the rain and Tom says we must be doing the same or else we're going to have to slit four throats. Yeah. So you're not going to talk about what her invention is? Yeah. Matches? Of course. Okay. Yeah, they're little sticks. They're sticks. She calls them sticks, and Matt's like, that's a terrible name. <laughs> yeah. But when she perfects it, it's going to make her her fortune. Because they don't work every time. They don't work every time. And that's literally like the history matches, too. I looked it up. Is it? Well, yeah. Oh, so, cool. yeah. Okay. But like originally, like they injected these little pine needles or whatever uh, with sulfur. And then they would, like, once you lit them on fire, they would catch immediately. Uh. But, like, until the invention of chemical matches, like, it was a very, you know, hit or miss situation. But she has access to, like, flammable chemicals. She does. She's got something. Which she could probably so. compact in the end of a stick. So she's going to make matches. She's making matches. So Matt and Tom grab two of the horses. They load up and head out into the rain. And Matt says, if I ever want to act the hero again, you kick me. And Tom says, yeah, and what'll that do? Yeah. <laughs> He's still going to do whatever You're he wants. He's still going to do the whatever time. the hell you want anyway. And that's the end of this chapter. Yeah, that was a lot of stuff that happened wow, all in two chapters. Wow, we flew through that, yeah. though. Like, I'm proud. I thought this episode was going to go two hours long with that many pages, but yeah. I guess there was a lot of description, too. It was, and a lot of, like, little tidbits of information. Now, so we've got the girls heading on down to Tyr on a very slow ship, and then we've got Matt and Tom ahead of them now that are but in Erendale, but they're going to Camelin, Camelin. so to deliver that letter. Yeah. And then the rest of the crew is still on the boat, I suppose, still heading to Tyr, so. To Ilian first. To Ilian, yeah. Ilian, then Tyr. Yeah, so I'm interested for them to get to Ilian to see if they actually make it to Tyr. Ooh, unless they get sidetracked by something. In Ilian. In Ilian. It's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm interested. Okay. That's good. Where do you think the group of Aiel are going? Probably. Do you remember what direction they were heading? No. After they left the girls? South. South. They're going to Tyr. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. probably another prophecy. It could be. They're like, like they, oh, those three Aes Sedai are going, going to, to Tyr. Tyr. So we also I'm know that go to Tyr. Gaul knows about Tyr, but we didn't see Gaul. Well, we might have. We, we haven't seen him yet. Yeah, but I was saying like we know that there was about 20 Aiel, but one of the Aiel we got introduced to was not Gaul in this group. No. So, no. yeah. And I think that would have been pointed out. Probably, And it doesn't yeah. make a lick of sense for Gaul to be over... In, like, Mirandi, right? Like, that's where they were at the border. No, the they were in Mor Kyrian. No, the Gaul and Perrin. Oh, Paul, Ga yeah, Gaul and Perrin. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I thought you were talking about the girls. No, no, no. They were over, like, at the Mirandi border. Like, yeah, it doesn't near, make sense near for... Near the Manetherin River. Yeah. And, like, for him to... Somehow get over there? Oh, no. Okay. And, I mean, like, you can run all day and night. I'm. You're not getting there. Not that fast. No, okay. no, no. Okay, and you know cool. how many rivers you'd have to cross? Oh my goodness. How many boats you have to make? Ships. <laughs> <laughs> Ships of two or three logs. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Sounds good. This was a good one. Yeah. And I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett with... Vince Lewick, Scott Williams, Passion Socks, Mozime, Michelle O'Brien, Derek Benton, Benjamin, and Derek Schluter with music by Audionautics.com. If you'd like bonus content like bonus episodes, outtakes, Q&As, more fun Wheel of Time talk, early access, cool stickers and keychains, and also to support us making great content, visit us at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Twitter at The Wheel Weaves Podcast. We love interacting with our listeners. Plus, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and tell a friend about us because referrals really are the best compliment. We'd really love for you to come over and join our Discord channel for some spoiler or spoiler-free discussions. You can find the links at our Twitter page as well as on our Patreon page. Thanks again for tuning in because this really is part of the pattern now.